this old Tony is a, a YouTube favourite of mine. Uh, I love what he does, but uh, he has got a bit to answer for in terms of uh, inciting tool envy in the in the rest of us whose workshops aren't so well equipped or as extensively equipped. One of the pieces of kit that he showed off uh, a while back now was a world rotator. And when I saw that, I thought, oh yes, wonderful, that would really help with welding up around fittings and things like that. And so over the last year or so, I've been collecting parts to do that. And um, so I'm going to be doing a little bit of that, but at the moment, um, that's brought up an interesting question about sheet metal and the stiffness of sheet metal. So I'm going to be addressing that uh, in this video and uh, showing you a couple of tricks on, on how to get uh, sheet metal just a little bit stiffer, not as floppy, not as noisy, all that sort of thing. This is an old school oil can. Um, interesting thing, very simple. So basically you've got the spout, screws onto a container, and the base of this is deliberately thin, right? So when you push it, and we call that effect oil canning, but that shows you basically what stiffness in sheet metal is all about. I'm nowhere near causing that to fail through overloading, but because of the, the way that works, um, it's failing through buckling. In this case, the buckling is good because it allows you to put a shot of oil where you want it, but most cases in sheet metal, you don't want it buckling. One of the things I need for my world rotator is a nice stiff base plate. Now, one of the issues with sheet metal is that it's, it can bend, and so if I bend it this way, you can see that flexes you know, relatively easily. If I do it this way though, where I've got some ribs in, much stiffer. My plan for this is that on this side I have a gearbox, and that's going to bolt down to there, and so that's going to be nice and stiff, and here I'm going to put a, uh, a reinforcing piece so that's that's going to stiffen up this this end is only going to have some gears sitting on it uh, something along the lines of that so that's that's not going to matter too much but i thought i'd, I'd run through a few ways of, of, of stiffening up sheet metal in engineer school they have a formula like this and it's basically the width of your material the depth of your material is the second moment of area is equal to the width times the depth cubed divided by 12. Now this changes for round stock and for, for sections all that but the important part here is that that property is influenced by the depth of it cubed and a lot of formulas for deflection have something like you know the deflection equals um, something or other in proportion to that okay so the takeaway message from all that is that if you want to get something stiff so it doesn't deflect you want to increase that as much as you can okay so here I've got that depth right and that's what makes that so stiff that way and when I put that piece in it'll make that bit stiff okay this is another way of stopping that oil canning effect, okay? By putting a very light crease across the sheet metal, you stiffen that up enormously, okay? Just giving a little bit of shape, and effectively that's flat. But because of that, that crease there, it's maybe in a degree or two, you've, you've stiffened it right up. And you'll see there's a lot on uh, trailers and things where you've got a, a frame, uh, covered with some sheet metal, uh, relatively thin, and that stops it buckling, vibrating, all that sort of stuff. This is a, uh, a parts wash down tray that I made up some time ago. It's filthy inside, so we won't dwell on the inside terribly much. But it does show another way of stiffening up sheet metal parts, and that is putting a lip on the on the outside here. It means that you've got, well, given that that isn't compressed flat, you've probably got three times the metal thickness on that top edge, so that's not going to go anywhere. The other nice thing about these, which I refer to as a safety edge, is that it means you haven't got a sharp piece of metal that you can slice your finger open if you're not careful. Uh, so if you're making up uh, sheet metal trays, for whatever reason, I would certainly suggest 
thinking about putting an edge like that on both in terms of stiffness but also in terms of uh, making sure it's um, not going to cut you when you least expect it. This is the other way of uh, stiffening up my sheet metal and that's putting a, um, a, a gusset piece like that in there. On that uh, tray base that I showed you it had a had a that folded into it sometimes if you've got a flat piece of material like on this motor mount you can't do that so here I've just added a piece like that uh, welded that on and that's that's once again stiffened that right up making something like that uh, on a folding brake is difficult because to get the folds in there you've actually got to have the leaf of the of the, the folder uh, where there's there's metal or there's going to be metal. Making something like that is much easier because you've got that clearance where you can have the leaf come in to fold things. Um, you can also do it like that as I've done there or even just a, a 90 degree angle and what you then do is you have your, your piece of flat there and just weld that on. That's not going to be as effective as this simply because the amount of material you're putting away uh, from your, your main piece isn't as much. So if you have the choice, uh, that's better than that. That one you probably can't do in a very, uh, very well in a home workshop. And uh, that one, well you can do it, but if you're going to be welding this on, then you can probably lose these feet. If you have to rivet that, uh, or, or um, spot weld it because you haven't got uh, uh, the ability to, to weld uh, corners onto a piece of flat sheet. Yeah, that's okay. That'll work. This is just pointing out a basic error that I've made. Aluminium, particularly when it gets heated up, expands. What's happened here is I haven't clamped this down adequately. I've started my weld here. This bottom piece of sheet metal has heated up, pushed away from the, uh, the gap. So I'm going to have to grind that out now. And restart but just something to bear in mind when welding is heat. So here's the uh, end result. Um, the welding isn't uh, all that flash. I've found out I've pinched a gas hose uh, halfway through which didn't help but I've got this brace in. To do that I welded there first and then held that down and put some tacks in um, and uh, then I worried about putting some weld in there and the reason for that is simply that when weld uh, is hot and then cools down to room temperature it contracts and so if I'd done this weld and then that weld it would tend to pull the whole thing up so when you know, it's one thing to to say yes I can I can stiffen sheet metal by putting a brace in but you've also got to think about if you're going to weld it uh, where the heat's going to go. So far the methods that I've demonstrated for um, stiffening up sheet metal have involved adding material for the, for the purpose of st just stiffening things up but uh, as one last possibility you could do something like this I wanted the switch handle recessed so that I can reach in and um, turn the thing on and off, but if it gets, it won't get knocked and break the switch off. But what I've also done there is added some depth to that section. So if I weld that on there, that's going to stiffen this whole corner up because suddenly, instead of having this long piece of sheet metal across here, I've got a, a short piece and I've got some with form and because of the welds in the corners there, you know, that's quite a rigid little um, uh, assembly. So, you know, that's another possibility for uh, stiffening up your sheet metal is just to put some um, features in there which take advantage of sheet metal and, uh, you know, give it a bit of, bit of depth, take a little bit of the, uh, the flex out. Sorry about that last shot, I shall have to speak severely to the camera operator. Anyway, I hope there was some interesting stuff here that uh, people can take away when, when thinking about making up sheet metal boxes and trays and things like that to make sure that they're as stiff as they, uh, they want them to be. So thanks for watching and uh, thanks to those who've uh, inspired me.